Hello everyone and welcome back to Urban Rush. He does indeed know 90210. I'm talking about our floor director, not our next guest. He knows the snow and that's why we have Dave Nerona here today. He's going to be talking to us about snowmobiling and how you can do that in the backcountry. How are you? Although Good. I would put uh, even money on the fact that you know a fair amount of 90210 as well. I don't know why, but... Uh, I'm not going to go out be hooked up to a lie detector on that one. Let's, let's put it that <laughs> We're way. the same demographic. Yeah. I know Dave, when you grew up. I'll admit it. This I know thing where looks you live. like the Bat Pod. What is this? Right. Well, this is a this is a 2009 um, Bombardier Skidoo um, snowmobile. It's Good amazing. Canadian made Skidoo. <laughs> there you go. Made in Canada, and yes, they are dramatically different from wow. snowmobiles of the past. It looks okay. like something out of a sci-fi movie. It really yeah. does. I mean, let's talk about some of these things. Let's start at the front uh, and maybe walk us through this a little bit because. I think if there's been an explosion in in sort of backcountry exploration, it's been these. Right, and this is what we call a mountain sled. So it's built specifically for out west, for going up big mountains. And what uh, Skidoo did a few years ago, last year for 2008, is they basically changed the whole chassis. It's now done on a CAD drawing, so all computerized, and it dropped 60 pounds and got 37% stiffer all around. So it's 30% 37% stronger wow. and uh, and lighter at the same and time. What does that, um, how much of a difference does that make on how much fuel it uses, being so much lighter? Right. It does everything from use less fuel, use less uh, oil because it is a two-stroke, um, almost as efficient as a four-stroke now. So the the stringent tests that, that are out there and is a good thing is snowmobiles are getting more and more fuel efficient, which is a really good thing for the environment as well. But also they get you to places where you can ski or ride um, where we want to be up into the Give us an example. Where have you taken this bad boy? Well, I take it everywhere between Squamish and Pemberton up through uh, all places in the Sea to Sky. And there's tons of clubs. One of the clubs where I ride a lot is Brome Ridge. Uh -huh. And we do a lot of skiing and snowmobiling. And um, it's just amazing up there. The powder, um, you're always getting fresh turns. Um, there's a specific few amount of friends that we go up there with and just have, have a great time. And this is the tool that allows us to get up there. Nice. Well, and you just have such epic days. I can't even imagine. Uh, okay, we have to talk because, you know, we've been discussing this every time you come on and appear on the show. Safety. Uh, I mean, paramount when you're on one of these things. And a lot of the accidents we hear about this year and a lot of the problems that they're having in uh, the backcountry right now are with people in snowmobiles and sort of not being prepared properly. Right, right. and it's just like any backcountry sport, but we, but whether it be snowshoeing or backcountry skiing, is it's really important to have an avalanche skills course under your belt and then, of course, always carrying a shovel, probe, and a beacon to make sure and know the snow conditions and, of course, checking with the avalanche um, website, avalanche.ca, to make sure you, where you know where it's safe and not so safe because... I'm a big proponent of going into the backcountry when you want to go, yeah. but you have to arm yourself with the information with to do that. Yeah, and and that's be. really important. And what we see with uh, some of the incidents that happen this year are just people making poor choices. And unfortunately, as much as everybody hates to see that, is they're paying with their life. And we really want to, uh, of course, that's going to happen less and less as education gets out there and more clubs are involved and the shops are involved mm -hmm. with getting people on board yeah, with all the gear. Everybody's knowledge base goes up and right. up and up. Uh, tell me about this. How come that's, uh, you've got the elevated sort of stock there on the steering? Well, because mountain riding, we don't sit on the seat, even though it does have a seat. Um, your stance for riding is actually standing straight up. And David so that Benefield wasn't very happy about that. Yeah, he, he wanted to, he wanted he to, wanted sort of to sit. sit down. He, he wanted to chill. Dave's more a touring. He'd, <laughs> lo he'd love uh, snowmobiling in Quebec or Ontario. But or, or in 1958. There you go, yeah. <laughs> but out, out here on the West Coast, it's really about standing and being aggressive and, and attacking through the, through the snow. And, you can and this see is here, you? This is me, yeah, carving just up uh, actually a couple of weeks <laughs> ago in the beautiful sunshine. And you can see why it's so addictive. I mean, wow, you just get so many like uh, powder face shots pretty much all day long. Now, I have a question. Can you take passengers on these things, or is it just a solo mission? It's When we ride, like what you see now, it's a solo mission. Because I wouldn't want to be on the back of that thing <laughs> trying to hang on. But my girlfriend Kim and I use it about half the time to ski. So we'll double up. And there's two types of things that we do when we ski. We either um, go sled skiing where we use it as a chairlift and do okay. loops like that, or we just use it to get up to the top of the backcountry and then we tour off the machine. So the nice thing about a snowmobile 
is that it gets you up there and then you can tour around. You're not having to tour from the very bottom of the That of looks the so beautiful, it's actually making me angry. Why? <laughs> because why I'm not, because I'm not there right now. That's why I'm angry. Okay, let's uh, let's have that. a look at uh, the back end of this thing. I'm assuming oh, yeah. this is where you take your skis and stuff. That's right. So this is a um, a cheetah factory racing rack. This is made by Dave up in Pemberton and Dave he's made, in Pemberton. He's made, a, he's, yeah, made Dave. A, he's made a business out of selling these racks all over the world for skiers and snowboarders yeah. who yeah. want to get into the backcountry. That's great. And there is a reason why he's one, pretty much the only person is because he does it himself and he makes the racks uh, amazingly strong and they hold up. And you can carry one set of skis on each side. That's what we do. But if you're yeah. a snowboarder, if you have two snowboarders, you just have this red piece is a, is a longer for a snowboard rack. Right. And so basically you get up to the top, person jumps off, grabs their snow, uh, snowboard, and uh, off you go. Does this ruin skiing on regular mountains for you? Like, it, I mean, can you go up to Cyprus and really throw down the way you want to? Oh, we have a rule <laughs> that if it snows like it did last night, 20 centimeters on the local mountains, we go for a little bit of a, of a ski. Right. But it really does. And, and the reason is, is because you literally can go up, you can uh, so. do three or four runs, sit back, have lunch, and then do three or four more runs all in the powder. There's no rush, there's no sitting in chairlifts, and you're really out there with yeah. your, your you know, 10 best friends and just yeah. having a great time. And lunch isn't costing you $70. Lunch isn't costing also, you $70, and you're not paying $100 nice. almost for, for a lift, lift pass. Lift yeah. Pass. yeah. So Crazy. It's actually surprisingly what most people, um, it is almost cheaper to have a snowmobile and ski than it is to have, go out and get you know two people to have a season's pass yeah. at wow. uh, some of the big resorts. Well, so, and the experience is like you said. I mean, once you fold that into it and that idea, idea of you know just sitting up on the mountain with some friends and hanging out is uh... yeah you can't buy that experience I mean for me it's all about the experience and getting up into the mountains and enjoying those magical yeah. days and this is are there some resources some places that people can learn about this and, and sort of get a taste for for how to get started and, and those initial steps right we uh, greater Vancouver power sports is is the um, is the store shop here in, in the lower mainland and they have all the gear that we've talked about um, and uh, they're super knowledgeable staff so you can go in there and check it all out and they'll show you everything um, and uh, we also have the um, Black Test Snowmobiling Club uh, website up as well. And that's a, it's great for to be involved in a club because it's, uh, there's strength in numbers about keeping and areas you learn open. So much. And also it's really important to be involved with a club because then you know where to ride and where you shouldn't ride. Because yeah. of course there's all shared issues in the mm -hmm. Sea to Sky and there's places just for backcountry skiing, only non-motorized. And then there's motorized areas, which is, which is the way it should be. And it's, it's great yeah. to have both. Well, Dave, yeah, as make usual, sure you know. thank you so much. And as Dave mentioned, the other important thing, is to, important thing is to check the conditions before you go so you can be safe out there. And you can go to the Avalanche website to find out more information about how you can get uh, a safety course under your belt so you can enjoy the backcountry as you should. Dave, thanks again. Thanks, Dave. You You're ever used welcome. one of these suckers before? Uh, on your head, maybe. You know, commercial <laughs> break. We're going to be right back. And when we return, it's dessert time with BB Bistro Mud and Aaron and Lumiere. Go away. I'll be digging myself out of that hole. Thank you, my friend.